skipped last week because they were harvesting all the wheat in the backyard. Between it being too windy and the wheat harvester, I figured the audio would be terrible. It's always windy here. Um, so, yeah, the audio will still not be great because it's so windy. So every year I try to grow something up this trellis. Every year it doesn't work. This year my pumpkins are taking over, and so rather than letting them take over the entire garden, I am training them here to go take over the trellis. So the things that I plant in this bed for the trellis never seem to make it up the trellis. But this pumpkin is like, I will not stop. And it actually is planted all the way over there, has trailed through all this chaos and is now coming up here. So uh, it's just very funny because I might finally get something on this trellis, but it's gonna be the pumpkins <laughs> that are like on the other side of the garden, not the cucumbers I planted here or the beans or the tomatoes. Um, we are getting some food, right? Like we're getting some tomatoes and these will be pretty, but it won't <laughs> be the arch that it's supposed to be. Um, and I'm pretty sure that these are my red curry pumpkins based on the shape of the blossoms so we might actually get a pumpkin hanging from this so we'll see it'll be exciting that'll be a nice pressure test my blueberries are covering in the squash um, these are spaghetti squash and so there was four i harvested one that was maldeformed and it looked a bit like a butternut and so to make sure that these were spaghetti squash and I was harvesting them correctly. I took that one last night and made it. And it's super tasty. Um, yeah. There's the red curries. So this is that same vine that has these. And we've already gotten, I think, five or six pumpkins of that variety. Um, I think I only had two plants. So they're very, very prolific. Uh, and I really like them. And they're small. And they're fast and quick to harvest. Uh, but yeah. And then think yeah here's another spaghetti squash I, I thought i planted a small summer variety and so i was harvesting these young and early because i thought that's what they were i don't think they are um and we've got cucumbers coming along i'm like these guys have no that's a parsnip it's like the lone parsnip there we go there's a, a cuke getting bigger Brussels sprouts starting to form. Um, this is my monster Brussels sprout <laughs> that I topped and it set off shoots. So this is just chaos, but good chaos. And we will eat that. And that's just going to be, it's just funny because it like flopped over. So now it's shading out these red cabbages and some beets that are in there. So I don't, I've been debating whether or not I should build a structure to prop it up, but we're going to get rid of these eventually. This is the only one that's still in like relatively good shape. So it's the one that gets to say that one's a disaster and is going to go away soon. My assumption is the minute that goes away, the windbreak it creates for this will make this one break. Um, so we're going to have to come up with new solutions. But that Brussels sprout has really never been exposed to the wind. And the reason I think it is doing so well and is this massive plant is because it has that level of protection. These are all from the same planting, right? Like these are not nearly as productive or cool. Um, and it's just also warmer in there. So I don't want to kill it because it's never been exposed to what reality is. Um, but yeah. And then these kohlrabi are starting to bulb up, which is nice. Peas are coming. We've got more cucumbers coming. Um, I'm training these cucumbers over to this trellis. And yeah, it's kind of cool. And there's some sorrel, some broadleaf dock that's just snuck in there. And then you just have to always check because you get shoots off the shoots off the shoots. Uh, this is a ground cherry. We have decided we don't actually like the way they taste. So I don't know if it's the variety we have or just in general, but, um, my boyfriend's brother really likes them, so he can eat them, <laughs> but we won't be going these again on purpose. They may volunteer, but not on purpose. And then there's 
my one of my market mores. Um, I'm gonna let it have one more day. Like this is oh, unless it falls off right now. Uh, but this is I found one that was enormous. And it was so delicious. So I'm just giving them more time. Hello, spider friend. Um this looks like it didn't get pollinated properly, so this will probably fall off. That one looks like it's doing okay, so we'll just see. But, yeah, I either need to get a trellis for the back here to let the cucumbers go up, or let this go all the way across to that and kind of trellis. I need to reorganize my garden. Um, this is just chaos and nonsense, because it's chaos and nonsense. This is a volunteer Jerusalem artichoke which we grew them here last year. And then we just have one there, which is kind of funny. Uh, these are my sweet potatoes with a couple beets. And so these are like the little pointy ones. So they're okay. Uh, this bucket's doing okay. It has onions and carrots and Brussels sprouts and an assertion. I just put too many plants in too small of a space. This is my cauliflower that failed. Okay. Some of these are like starting to head up and doing okay, but they're just baby. It's nonsense. I never thin, I didn't thin this out enough. This is my own fault. Um, these are express cabbages. So these are a 65 day variety. So hopefully we'll actually get some cabbages now. And then I interplanted some carrots because I just keep popping carrots in. And then this was the mustard bed. And so that is uh, some mustard that has re-volunteered. And then you can see there's little brassica starts in there, which will also most likely be mustard that from the Christmas mustard seeds we saved. Um, yeah. I'm going to try to walk through this without falling over. I make no promises. So I pruned this back to make a path, <laughs> which is just kind of funny. And you can see we have a little bit of powdery, powdery mildew coming on, but it's okay. Uh, this is fennel. So this is a fennel that I planted, forgot to harvest, and then it bolted. Got another cucumber plant there. Setting a cucumber. The plan was for it to trellis on here, and now the spaghetti squash is taken over. So I'm going to try to redirect the spaghetti squash this way, back into the garden, I think, rather than that way along the fence. But we'll see what it does. It'll be fine. Um, this is my mutant kohlrabi. So this got attacked by bugs and then it recovered and is now making one, two, and three little kohlrabi <laughs> bugs off the stem. Um, I don't know what kind of kale that is. These are orca beans. So these are the black and white potted beans. So I have to not harvest these. <laughs> I just have to keep reminding myself, don't harvest these. <laughs> these are supposed to be big. And then um, these are my purple beans. So these guys um, just started setting like reasonable amount of fruit and good size. And so like I came out here and I harvested the big ones yesterday and then uh, put them in a fermentation jar. So we're going to need to come out and get more beans. So we might have purple green beans for dinner tonight again. But this is a second planting, a uh, direct sowed. I want to say late, late June, early July maybe, and now we're starting to get these. But yeah, I had a couple plants in the greenhouse um, that didn't do very well after we did a transplant and moved things around um, and reorganized. And I really liked the way that they taste, the way that they look. And they maintain a lot of their purple color, even when you're cooking with them. They don't go super green the way everybody says the minute you cook them, they turn green. Um, so. I really like this variety and I'll look up what it is and put it, I'll put text in for the description. Um, but yeah, so I was like, all right, we need more beans. And so as I cleared out my onions and my carrots from this bed, I just seeded beans. And so the front of this used to be carrots and then there were onions behind. And so they've been replaced by these beans. And this is a new bed that I built that just has chicken filth, planting soil, and then it had some bark and like, as you can see, over here, it has been invaded by grasses, which is fine. It's fine. Uh, and then we are in to blackberries. So my blackberries are coming on. I harvested a bunch yesterday for the kids. 
Um, there's one that fell off. That's typically a good sign if they fall off on their own. That means they're going to be sweet and tasty and delicious. And then, like, these are still shiny. But if you touch them and they fall off, then you know, like, they're perfect. That took a little effort. And the middle is green still, so this is probably not going to be that great. But, yeah. Oh, tart. Very tart. That's my own fault. But yeah, so if you go to them and they no longer look shiny and they take no effort to fall off the plant, that tends to be the sweetest berry. Uh, more Brussels sprouts that I transplanted from there. I send that out by planting them in other places. So we will hopefully get a decent amount of sprouts. And yeah, this is just my pumpkin monster. Like there's some more pruning and stuff I need to do in there and here and just kind of schwack it back and get rid of some of the powdery mildew or try at least but it's okay and we already have like 15 pumpkins or something some ridiculous number in the house um and i'm letting them just they send down roots right like along the stem where it touches the ground so i'm just letting them do that they the fabric right like where they're doing the least good in that middle is where they don't have the ability to send off a new root system so like that makes sense they can't penetrate and get to the ground under the fabric I like the weed suppressive fabric but yeah they're happy and they're good and they're taken over the world oh and I had pears out here yesterday. I think toddlers stole all the ones from the top. Um, but we have more down here. They, they should be ready in a little bit. So, yeah, we're getting, we're getting pears. Uh, I do clearly have some disease here and some rust, but it's okay. It's, it's what it is. But, yeah, I planted this three years ago. Um... It has no nothing. <laughs> like, it's just, I stuck it in the ground. I don't feed it. I don't do anything to it. I'm just letting it figure its life out. Um, and it's okay. But yeah, this is, this is seen better days. It's okay. Oh, I need to be a better arborist, but I self, I admittedly am not a good arborist. <laughs> I keep killing keep killing trees, especially citrus ones. It's okay. These are my brassicas are my friends. <laughs> and I think that has a lot to do with the climate. Um, in this box, there's New Zealand spinach. Right. So this guy volunteered. I grew this in here last year and it's at seed. And then that is ong choy or water spinach. I didn't think this would grow unless I gave it cover. And then that's just the saddest red cabbage that I planted last year that never headed up. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, yeah. There's chaos over there. This completely got destroyed by the wind, so we need to tear it all out. Which is fine. It's what it is. It's hilarious. It was 50 bucks and it did what it needed to for a while. Um, we're still getting sweet potatoes and tomatoes and stuff from there. And then those are, they're sweet potatoes and tomatoes and then a second planting of like a summer variety. Hey okay. guys. Um, and then my chickens, my corn, even though it's super windy, we didn't get pollinated well. So like there were no kernels. So I gave it to the chicken. Hey guys. Yeah, what's up Gandalf? Um, but so, just corn is just a big blade of grass, and they're super into it, so I'm giving them that to scratch at, and eventually this will go to building uh, the beds for next year. So, all of this will end up 
the chicken filth and their bedding and litter and all of the the food that I've allowed them to compost but they love it and so they, there's bugs in there I gave them some dirt so they might have some worms and uh, they definitely have some earwigs but it gives them something to play with and explore and peck at and it's food so they are they are happy chick chicks taking out the corn and so yeah I'm gonna go uh, get them breakfast and give them some water but yeah and then this is just like a weird morning glory that volunteered over here I don't know where it came from I'm gonna blame the bird and then these are my second succession of corn and there is a tomato growing through it and using the corn as support that was just I stuck a tomato sucker in there um, there's also a cucumber that I planted and then these are Waltham butternut squash so my hope is that we'll get some of that all back there is just weeds that it's too hard for me to get to so I'm letting them do weeds uh, this is the best cauliflower that I have which is really funny because it's growing in the shade of the corn uh, smolthron or wild strawberry okay. these are actually really tasty um, and we've been getting them for months uh, I seeded some more cauliflower seeds in here and transplanted uh, the Nero Toscano and Black Magic Kale um, when I took out the corn last night. So hopefully it will rain on this today and that'll get taken care of. There's still a couple of the stalks you can see. The ears were like really tiny, not pollinated. It's fine. Um, so some of the old ones are still there because they were just too hard to get into and I didn't want to disturb this new patch of corn. And these ones I direct sowed. The other ones I started in the house and transplanted out. And so it was, I think, a little too early. So they just didn't set properly, which is fine. Uh, my main reason for having this covered was to keep the birds off it. Uh, I found that the spinach I had planted in here, the germination that was doing really well, uh, it wasn't getting enough water and it, a bunch of it died back. So I need to replant that. Which is dangerous. It's fine. Uh, yeah. I think this is a Colette, and then, oh, curse power. Um, I threw some, like, salad-y brassicas in here for cut and come again. These were my summer cabbages that didn't do well. They got attacked by all the things, so I just keep doing more successions of planting. Carrots time, rosemary. More tomatoes, the greenhouse, and all of its, oh, I need to maintain this, known as beans taken over the world, which is very funny to me. Um, we have a bunch of eggplants that I need to come out and harvest. Um, more beans. A thousand head kale that doesn't look, seem very happy. Uh, my sweet 100 cherry tomatoes, which we've been getting for a while now. My whole garden I started from seed this year, which is bananas. That is purple sprouting broccoli that I started way too early, living its best life in the greenhouse and opening to flowers and bolted. So I'm gonna actually need to take that center one out, which is fine. Like, it's what it is. Um, I actually like the way broccoli flowers taste, so it's okay. You just make it work um so yeah i've got colettes in here this was my plan was to grow colettes in the greenhouse in these pots and then yeah yeah we'll see but i need to water all of this and we have major white cabbage moth damage so as you can see a lot of things got attached for the cabbage whites um san marzano paste tomatoes more purple green beans that I just popped in here. San Marzano paste tomato, sweet 100 suckers. My original plan was to start them in here and transplant them out and then they started setting fruit and I'm like, okay, well, I guess that's what you wanna do. So you can do it. Uh, what else? This is brandy wine. I'm trying to think if there's anything. There was a loof in here, I think it died. 
This is my melon, which I'm just waiting to ripen up. So that'll be good. Uh, bell peppers, snack peppers, sweet peppers. There's some ginger and a celeriac back there. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I think this is a cucumber. So, uh, this is my padrone peppers, which are inexplicably spicy. They are so hot. It's ridiculous. They're tasty and flavorful, but they are punch you in the face spicy. Um, yeah, more purple green beans. And just a mess. <laughs> it's fine. Um, I thought this one was a cauliflower. It's not heading up at all and getting very tall. So there's a not zero chance that this is like a thousand head kale or something and I've just totally mislabeled and forgotten what it was and we could have been eating this this whole time and instead I've just been get waiting for the leaves to die back and giving them to the chickens. I don't know what this is. I grow too many varieties and I don't label enough. This is my own fault. I know that. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, but I thought that these were cauliflower. They still might be cauliflowers, we're just not heading up, uh, but the leaves are edible. Um, I put some, I think I did salad mix in here, I think, or Asian greens and then beets. And so I'm just protecting them from the birds and of course this split, so it's fine. Like this is, it was super windy yesterday, um, but yeah. And then we're getting a little bit of the green moss, but it's okay. This is mostly to protect the beets from the birds because we just have way too many finches. And they really like the taste of beets. So they keep killing all of my beets. It's fine. Uh, tomatoes along the fence line are doing fine. My neighbors don't know to eat them, so I keep harvesting them. It's fine. Um, I direct sowed some more cucumbers in here. And these are already coming up, so this bottom that I had tried to see if we could get more the potatoes to restart themselves from the past like I just left some of the plants in there and they died back which and then the slugs came and cleaned them up so there's no more potatoes coming from that last batch this top has some potatoes coming up and through so we'll probably get some more potatoes on top but the bottoms didn't have anything so I put uh, cucumber seeds in for the little snack cucumbers hey what's up giant slug um, and so that's what that is. Uh, these potatoes actually I probably need to harvest. I think, yeah, I think those are past their prime time, but I need a dry day. So we'll wait for that. Uh, the fig tree that is coming back, it died and then it set off a new shoot. So I'm trying to not kill it by tripping over it, which I do all the time. Uh, and then these are the variety of cucumber that I planted in that potato tower because we've been eating them and they're working and they're giving us fruits so I know that they will happily grow in these little potato containers so we should get another flush of those in a couple weeks and then I threw some uh, cauliflower seeds in there so yeah we've got fairly we've got good tomatoes happening right now for southern Sweden like that's I'm happy with that yeah. And then these guys, they're just little pickling cucumbers and they're really tasty and sweet and good for salads and very prolific. So I'm, I'm happy with this decision. Um, but yeah, the original premise was for them to grow up this trellis and then that didn't happen. Uh, more raspberries. So these are also ridiculously delicious and we get them cause I don't prune back all the way. I leave some of the canes from the previous year like I take the deadwood out like this is a third year cane and this will need to come out but these guys that are first year canes next year will be prima canes and they will set fruit early and then we'll have later so we'll get them from June all the way to October November uh, depending on how cold it gets right and they're super tasty very sweet very flavorful taking over this garden bed um, i'm waiting 
for it to be winter. And then I'm going to dig these up and transplant them into the row. Um, these, some of them transplanted okay. Like that one did okay. These ones did okay. That one died. Uh, but the goal is eventually to have just raspberries all the way across here. And like there used to be two rose bushes here when I first moved in. I dug them up and I put these two raspberry plants in. And that was four years ago. Uh, my neighbors across the street, before they sold their house, they let me uh, bring some, to get some plants out of their yard. Um, and so those two plants have turned into all of these plants and all of this food. And my, I've even given some of these plants away to other people. So like I've taken the runners and so they're just growing, but they're no idea what the variety is because it is like random patch of fruit that is growing across the street that my neighbors gave to me so that I could continue growing their raspberry in case the new owners weren't gardeners. So, um, I need to come and fix this because I've got tomatoes on the ground on top of purple, purple beans, green beans. So it's okay. It's what it is. And I'm being attacked by raspberries, but we've got I think these are the money maker tomatoes. So, like, that's a little bit of cat facing and not great, but it's whatever. It's fine. Uh, Cherokee purple tomatoes, which are super awesome. Uh, green kale, soldaki tomatoes, which just look like a sunset to me. They're really pretty. Oh. Right, like they're just really pretty and they're just growing in this pot like and I haven't really fertilized it but we've gotten a handful of tomatoes off them yeah we've got all these weird things happening right now but yeah oh that'll be a nice one hello this is like four tomatoes fused or four blossoms fused together that's probably gonna be my biggest tomato of the year because I missed the cat facing and didn't take it off. So yeah. Uh, this is a very weird squash <laughs> that sometimes looks like Zephyr, sometimes doesn't, and then it grows out of the screen, and they're always yellow. But yeah. And then volunteer calendula, and so I'm just constantly picking off these heads, hoping I get them before the seeds are final, and throwing them over there. And then if I get volunteer calendula over there, that's fine. Oh, but yeah, these are, I just have to deadhead all these flowers, but we will most likely have more volunteer coins Uh This was where my big spaghetti squash was, harvested it, it has a friend over there. Um, yeah, zinnia, I'm letting that drop because they're pretty. These strawberries are uh, runners off of a strawberry plant, a set of runners that we got from a neighbor the first summer that I was here. Um, those neighbors subsequently also no longer live here. Her, they had lived here since like 1952, um, and her husband passed away, and then his family moved her uh, to her own apartment because they were worried about mom being alone in the country by herself with no one to be easily able to take care of her. So, uh, yeah, when he was still alive, we talked about gardening in my very limited Swedish. Um, and they gave me some of their runners. And so I'm still growing the plants. I don't know if anyone else in the neighborhood grows them, but I'm carrying on their tradition. So the raspberries are from that house and the strawberries are from that house. And yeah, I'm the weirdo American carrying on these like Swedish, like just random local plant varieties. So yeah. Uh, green beans. They have the flat, like, more French runner bean style. But they're a bush variety, which is why they're in here. Uh, but, oh, hello. Yep. So I need to come out here and do a harvest of more beans. Just gonna take those before I lose them and forget them. As beans are wont to do. <laughs> Anyone who grows beans knows, oh, if you think you should get it now, you should probably 
can get in now. Um, this, I believe, is a rutabaga and is looking way happier now. Uh, <laughs> that's a, a celery that toppled over. So we're going to probably get volunteer celery in the path next year because that's what's happening. Um, I think this is a brandy wine. Not positive. I've lost track of my varieties because I do that. Tarragon. Yep. And blueberries, which are starting to ripen. And I never moved them out of here. They just were in here. Uh, that one is clearly dying because it is dried out and not getting rained on. Ugh, it's okay. It's fine. Um, I think more collects. We'll see. But yeah, that's that's the chaos of the garden. Um, and lots of harvests. If you want to see pictures of my harvest, they're all on Instagram. Um, I'll put a picture of some of the stuff that's in the house right now. But we're getting there. It's good. It still kind of feels like summer. I'm gonna go feed the chickens and my kid. Woo! Two things I forgot. This is my red Russian kale that was in the back that I saved for seed. And I've just been kind of like well, dropping some around the yard and in buckets and stuff. But if you've never like done this before, that's that's it. You just wait till it dries out and they snap and they sound pretty cool like they'll sound like rattles a little bit um, when you're feeling them and yeah that's just that's a kale seed that's why kale seeds are cheap because one plant will give you millions if you let it right and so i've just been taking things like this and going oh there's a spare spot okay if you give me a plant, cool. If you don't, it's cool. It was free. Um, and then the other thing I forgot to show you is okra. Southern gardeners can laugh at me because of how excited I am at this okra on these tiny plants that I started, I think, in the house like four months ago. And like, this is like, I, I harvested one off of here, and that's my second one. And like, in the south you're like oh my god if you leave it alone for a day like they're huge and i'm like in in sweden it's too freaking cold <laughs> this is like a week and a half's worth of growth <laughs> it's fine um but yeah so it yeah uh, there are things that are much easier for other people to grow in your climate so don't get discouraged if you look at someone's garden and you're like oh my god it's so beautiful and amazing and it's so great and why does it mine look like that and you're like because you have a completely different climate and completely different conditions so don't feel bad about what you have versus other people and i'm gonna go inside before this storm rolls in and chickens are having breakfast and very happy right it's a good sound happy cluck clucks and there are random mushrooms in the yard that I don't know what they are so I'm not going to eat them um there's they're most likely just field mushrooms because right paint gills and stuff but uh we have toddlers and I can't really afford to die so I'm pretty sure that these are edible and actually a choice edible and I have them throughout my yard but because of the kids and a paranoid boyfriend we don't eat them but yeah i'm sure someone will comment oh, that's my favorite let me come over and eat those mushrooms so um, yeah maybe someday we'll get brave but only after a mycologist confirms that these are things that we should put in our bodies i just always worry that they're yellow stainers because right like they stain yellow first At least they used to. Right, like the bases. I don't know. 
They get really big. They're very pretty. And yeah, it's safe to touch mushrooms. Don't believe the hype, but I'm pretty sure these are prairie. They smell okay. <laughs> Still not gonna eat them and definitely not raw. Hollow stem? Yeah, I don't know. It's gonna go in the compost pile. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks for watching. Sorry if I just made it weird. Compost! Neighbor's apple tree that always drops apples into our yard. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. <sighs> it's fine. Happy gardening.